Okay. And you're going to download that application and you're going to install it on your computer. FileZilla. Could you repeat that, please? You're going to download it and install it on your computer. Okay. It's, it's pretty simple. It doesn't go through a lot of steps. So it's FileZilla. F I L E Z I L L A. We're unable to um, download FileZilla. We both have tablets. We both have tablets. Oh, we didn't bring in any computer. Uh, All right.
Okay, I said the presentation, so I'm going to give you a few minutes. By that time, you should get it. Let me know when you've received it. I'm using the email I have on the contact list. Simply Dana28 and But she's not good in here. So let her repeat herself. Okay. I I sent the presentation for today. I sent it yes. to her email. Okay then. Thank yes, you. Yes, we got it. Yeah. Okay. Do they have the ends at bookshop? Are you following? 
<laughs> yes, we are. Um, but I think um, we didn't get that PowerPoint presentation. You didn't? I, I, just, to, I just emailed it to you. Oh, you, oh, you just, just did? Okay. Okay, you want to check? Let me give you a minute to check. Yes, I'm going to check now. Okay. The screen is already blurry. The light. Light. Alright. And then also, I'm not sure when the camera opens on it. Okay, we got it. Okay, that's it. That's good. Okay. All right, so I'm looking at the I'm looking at the slide with the picture of the two types of case. One is shielded, and you'll see that metal um, casing, and one is unshielded. And if you look closely, the wires that there are actually two sets of, of wires that have been twisted. So even you, even though you see four, it's actually four pairs of wires. All right, now the coaxial cable consists of a central copper conductor wrapped in a plastic insulation material. It is surrounded by a braided wire shield and wrapped in plastic cable sheet. Um, Coaxial, what the experience I've had using coaxial is really for um, cable. I don't know if anybody else do you use the TV as a yes. Yeah. Yes. To the, as in, to as in cable television. Oh, to the TV to the antenna at, 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 at the room. Okay. It's the same cable. All right, so I am used to it being in the one, the one that you plug in the back for access to the cable. And it also the same wire that runs up to the antenna. Okay. Is there any other you have experience Yes, what do you use coaxial for? Well generally um you can use it for um C C D P closer circuit cameras. Okay. Are you hearing? Uh, yes we are. And use for closed circuit cameras. Okay. Right, and on the other slide, you'll see a picture of what the coaxial cable looks like. Fiber optic. This type of cable uses a glass strand and carries the data signals as light instead of electricity. It is used for extremely fast networks and can span extremely far distances. This is not something you necessarily find in your, you wouldn't find it in your home. It's not something you buy and use in your home. This is something that um, like a, a company would use, right? Um, it can easily reach two miles at 100 megabits per second and this cable is usually used to connect buildings together in a campus like setting of course if you have a type of cable this type of cable um of course the faster it is and more effective it's definitely more expensive right And here's what the a cross section, right? This is a an image of the cross section of what the fiber optic cable looks like. They have the presentation. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. They have the presentation. All right, now. 
As we look close at twisted pyramid, um, it's broken down into different cat categories. So it can either be 10 base 2, 10 base T, 100 base T, and so on. And we look at what the numbers mean and what the letters stand for. So the first number in this standard, 100 or 1,000, indicates the data rate megabits per second. That's how much information it can um, transport or transmit or transfer at any point in time. And the word, the word base means the network is baseband rather than, rather than broadband. Note that baseband networks only carry one signal at a time, but broadband carries multiple signals at a time. So the terminating letter or number indicates what sort of cable is used. So T means twisted pair, 2 means coaxial, 5 means thick coaxial, and F or X usually indicates fiber optic. So this is really general knowledge because I know once you're finished with this course, um, this probably falls to the back of your brain if you remember it. Right? But good to know. All right, some common twisted pair cable standards. 10 base 2 gives you, it, that's actually supposed to be 10 megabits per second. 10 Mbps, you can correct that for me, please. Um, the second one, 1 base 5, 10 Mbps. 10 base T, 10 also. Um, 10 base T, 100 a bit per second for twisted pair. 100 base TX, 100 base FX, 1000 base T, and 10 G base X. So this is how fast, um, depending on the standard, how fast it can transfer data. Can you repeat one of the signature for it? The one's at the top. One's at the top. The first two should say 10 MBPS, not MPS. So correct that. Those coming, please. So, for Ethernet bus applications, there is no external terminator. Since the cable is terminated within the hub and the NIC. And what does NIC stand for? Network interface. Network interface card. The maximum segment from the hub to the workstation is 100 meters. So you can't cut a cable longer than that. Yeah. Maximum VP for 10 base C is 0.59 C. And the maximum medium delay per segment is 100 NS. 1000 NS. Sorry. Um, that nanosecond. Yes. Okay. So that's nanosecond. All right. Now, communication problems that occur in 10 base T installations are easier to trace than in thick or thin coaxial cable installations. And the physical configuration with one node per segment makes it easier to trace bad node or wire run. All right, so did you do, you didn't do topology last week? What do you mean before we got the notes? Oh, you got the notes, okay. All right, so prior to this, we looked at topology. I'm sure Dr. Morris is going to make um, arrangements to go through all of that with you. So they looked at topologies and um, different layouts or different types of network. I don't know if that information was transferred to you. So there are different, um, depending on the topology, then that would determine the kind of equipment used and the layout of the cables and so on. So as I said, um, you, would have, you have missed that particular class, but I'm sure you will catch up at some point in time. 
And so that speaks to the physical configuration. Some characteristics of the twisted pair cable. Uh, physical star configuration. Maximum cable length is 100 meters. With the star configuration, you are here for topology class. You have a central, a central hub that all the devices are connected to. And this is why if you look in a lab, you have wires running some distance, maybe into a specific room that has a hub or switch or whatever devices they have that connects everything. Sorry, just some clarification though. Yes. Um, I think topology was only mentioned. Was it wasn't mentioned. going to in detail. Okay. So the, the, the general idea is that you be we made to be aware of the three main topologies. Okay. And, and I think that's where it surrounds. Okay. Right. So at some point in time, yeah. if you need to go for it, I'm sure that will be done. Right. Yeah. Alright, so nodes are connected by a concentrator, um, supports baseband transmissions, medium, minimum medium delay, and there are no external terminators. Alright, now the token ring is another standard token ring appli applications of twisted cable. Right, I'm going to I'm going to skip to coaxial cable. Are you following? So I'm going to slide 18. Following St. Lucia. Eighty. Sorry, could you repeat that? It's breaking up really yeah, bad. Okay. I am skipping to slide number 18. Coaxial cable. Okay. What labs do you have at your school? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? computer labs do you have at your school? You will have to speak differently because you are two different schools, correct? Right? Yes, two different schools. At my school, we have um, four How many labs did you say four? Yes, four. Okay, all right. And do you have any sort of um, responsibilities as it relates to the lab? Can you repeat that? Do you have any responsibilities as it relates to the overseeing or the running of the lab? Um, really bad. All right, uh, what I wanted to know is, as teachers, do you have any responsibility as it relates to monitoring the lab? Um, um, I think we might need to call again. They're breaking up really fast. Yeah. I could be in the position for me. I mean, what? The connection James? is really poor. There, yes, that's me. Okay, but are you hearing me better now? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Okay, beautiful. All right, well, what I was asking is because I know in some schools, as the information technology, you have to do some work as it relates to monitoring 
um, the computer lab activities, not activities, um, the overall running of the lab, maybe even setting up computers and so on. So I wanted to know if you have any responsibilities where the running of the lab is concerned. Oh. Um, no, we don't. We actually have a lab technician that takes care of the setup, the setup of the lab. Okay. All right. And is this, that's the same for you, Dana? Yes, that's the same. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. I teach. That's okay, that's all you do. Teach. All right. So you've never were you on staff when they had to set up the computer lab and um, run the cables and so on, or you came and you saw the lab set up? Um, when I that was already set up. Okay, and that's the same. That's the same for me. The minute was set up. Okay, and you? Um, for me, the lab was set up, but. Uh, we did recently get some additional machines, and so the teachers and the single lab tech kind of worked together to connect them to the existing network. Okay, so did you have to do any type of thing? Other than to push it in? No. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so for tonight, for you, you haven't, um, you, you didn't have to go through the whole cabling experience, oh, right? and creating the cable and ensuring that it works and all of that. All right, so we're looking at coaxial cable. And it's a commonly, it's commonly used in Ethernet ne networks, right? And Ethernet is a, is a standard in networking. There are two types, the thick and the thin coaxial cable. Now, this was the, the thick one was the first type of coaxial cable used for Ethernet application, and at its core is a copper clad aluminum conductor. So you'll see one copper uh, wire sticking out. Its conductor has a large diameter than the thin coaxial cable. So that is one main difference. It is surrounded by insulation. An aluminum sleeve is wrapped around the outside of the insulation and a polyvinyl jacket covers aluminum sleeve. So all of these things really help to minimize any electrical or electromagnetic interference when you run your cable. So the cable jacket is marked every 2.5 meters to show where a network device can be attached. And this is the closest network devices can be attached. Any closer, there might be network errors. The thick cable is difficult to bend because of the large diameter of copper conductor. Thick coaxial cables are used on bus networks with a transmission speed of 10 megabits per second or 10 base two, base 5. With the bus um, topology, um, it's as if you have one, one big cable and the devices are, are attached to it, right? So if, so as opposed to the star, where they all, all the, the devices are linked to one area and they terminate at one point. So, yes. just to, so the, um, the coax that we currently use is, is, the, is the thin one. The, the one that we use on the TV, the key, as we spoke of earlier. This same red one here that connected to these systems. Yeah, based on this picture here, it's the thin one. one. All right, so um, some of the basic characteristics are listed here, which we went through. 
and the maximum cable length is 500 meters. All right, so see it says cable. So the thin coaxial cable is also known as RG58, established way back then. Um, it supports a data transmission rate of 10 megabits per second on Ethernet bus topologies, and its maximum cable length is 185 meters with up to 30 nodes per segment. So it, you can't run it as long as the thick one, right? Because the interference is the, the ability to withstand interference is less. It's constructed similar to the thick cable, except for the diameter of the cable. It is flexible and thin, which makes it possible to run it walls and on cable rods. So you can run it alongside other cables, right? And again, here we have some characteristics. Um, you can attach devices every 0.5 meter or half a meter. Maximum cable length, transmission speed, how many nodes or devices you can attach per segment, um, and it supports base transmission. All right, it also states the cable type, maximum medium delay per segment, um, a nanosecond, how, how, how long is a nanosecond? Is that 1,000 of a second? 1,000 of a normal second. So you can... It's really not much of a, a, a lengthy delay right there. I'm not sure if you really even notice the delay. Alright, so all right, so as I mentioned, um, what we're looking at, we're just looking at the basics um, of the different types of cables. We may or may not use these tags, but it's just for your um, knowledge purpose or expanding your knowledge base as it relates to, to networking. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a network cable. So I'm going to, I have the wires. <laughs> All right, so you have the wires. You have your wires. Are your cables? Do you have your cables? documents I'm going to send to you. One of them is um, guidelines how to make the cable, the patch cable.
Okay. Oh, Thank you. 
So you start with the white, blue, white, green. Yes, white, I think it's white, green. Um, she said email is four files or whatever. Um, so Category five. 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 Okay, I'm going to 
All right, have you done that? Yes, we have. Going to do, you'll get your N, your RJ 45 N, and you're going to insert the wires carefully in what they the side that you're going to have up is the side that doesn't have the clip. That little thing that slips into the um, the network card, it must be the opposite side. So that side should have sort of a dip, like a little sink. Am I clear? Yes, you are. Okay. So you insert your wires into the end with that facing up. And make sure that at the tip of your connect, your end, you can see the copper wires. So you have to press it all the way up into the, into the end. Yes, we have. Okay, now do the same for the other end. I don't want it to crimp yet because if you crimp it and it's not set properly, you will have to cut off the end, that entire part and go through the process again. I can. Okay. Yes, and you can't reuse the ends. Right. Oh. So do the same, make sure that you insert the wires with that pipe facing up and make sure that all the wires touch the end, the tip. It's me. That's too long, guys. 
Part of the rubber has to go in. trying to push it into the slot. Thank you. 
We're trying to crimp the ends, but I don't think it's working. Alright, can you? <laughs> can you no longer have a good mm. All right. Oh, so we have to start over. No, mm. check the From check the show. Can the can, uh, can the wire come out? I mean, pull it yeah, out. wires are coming out, and the the yeah. ends okay. are staying in. They? The ends are coming. <laughs> well, the ends stay in the crimper. Oh, and the oh. wires come off. Press too hard. Press too hard. Press too hard. Yes, that's a possibility. Um, Can you press the wire? Yes, that's a possibility. So that means they're... I didn't push in the wire deep enough before the crimp. Oh, okay. All right. Remember what I said. When you're going to, before you crimp it, you have to push the wire all the way up to the tip. Oh, yes. So that when yes, you look... It is. When you look at it um, from the tip that will go into the network card, you can see the copper all eight of six, eight of them. Yes. Just push it all the way in. Okay, we're trying again. Okay, Courtney, give me some advice here. Oh, gosh. Let's push it. Yes. Oh, I'm 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 happy to know that you're having fun. <laughs> yes, we are. It's a learning okay, process. Guys. Yes, quite so. We're so jealous. You can always join us. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, hold <laughs> right up. <laughs> to the camera so we can see. Bless your heart for trying. They know how to take care of things. They know how to do that. I'll take some of that. One second. One second. <laughs> It's struggling to push it in. What's going on over there? So um, while you enjoy um, creating your cable, just give us one minute. We're, we're trying to join okay. in. Yes, we're trying uh, to join in the, the phone. <laughs> Is it working out for you? 
the technician is assisting us. Oh, okay, okay, that's really fair. Yes, because I put two D mm -hmm. and then I put the other one and I was really fat. This last time I gave up because it was like Teaching programming? You're too, you're too far. I wanted to do the observation. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, too far. <laughs> no, 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 for, 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 for grade 10, I'm doing spreadsheet. Okay. You finished teaching programming with grade 11? You're finished with that? Yes, because we're going, going into my exam. Okay. Shortly, you know, by the time you come, like, three farmers is the result. Okay. I'm going to my exam. So you want to start you know the great, yeah? The we normally the last the last semester. Of tenth grade. Yeah, we're going to pick four. Mm -hmm. We start we start problem solving from the first term in first grade term. ten. Okay. The problem solving and then we start the Pascal. The second term. Okay. And then the and they don't forget it. No, because it's all going every single okay. week. There's something there's an assignment. Because if you leave it, then they forget it. I know, that's how we teach our If you leave it, they forget it. So that everything so that is we, 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 we take stuff. it from down there and yeah. then bring it right through. Then everything in the code except oh, no. arrays up to December. Yes. So it's taking that time and go through the if and everything. So by the time they start slowly but surely, you can say, all right, you remember that pseudocode you wrote? I open it up now. Okay. So when you get to so grade when 11, you're saying, all right, let's look at something. When do you productivity do? From the beginning, too. We have four hours what? a week with them. In yeah, productivity, grade. too. And three hours a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, yeah. From, 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 it's an yeah, ongoing thing all the way through, you know, from day one. Okay, because it's an ongoing thing all the way through. The SB has the, we do the, um, the word processing. And the spreadsheet components earlier. Okay. So they do that as in one. Yeah, that's what they do. The harder ones. Yeah, the harder ones. They begin with the information. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, Dana and Jessica, we are waiting on something. So that's why we pause. Um, okay, you then. Your, did you test your cable? Yeah. Yeah. We're still trying. Okay. Do you follow Courtney's advice? <laughs> Push it deeper. They'll never forget. I'll never forget. Courtney said, "Push it deeper." Thank you. 
the most students in the world. Yes, you're so good. You can tell me what you're introducing yourself as well. Oh, okay. My daughter is still reading from one to one from last week. She was looking for an open way to help school. I realized she was having a problem because there she was looking for something. She was trying to get a big Wi-Fi lock. I said, that is a beautiful name. A big Wi-Fi lock. All I do is I ask her to send her and she goes, oh no. Why the floor is <laughs> So we're gonna have to give everybody one. Yay! So be careful now. And that can't be. Courtney, there ends. There ends. There ends. It's like Christmas over here. Oh, no, no. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. I'm just happy that you stay there at the time, so it's Oh, so you are getting this part my cash. Go home and do some cartwheels, and then I'm going to see my You kind of take it to things out of the house. See, those are the things. It's a good Listen, I mean, there's no so orange white. Are you colorblind? No, you have. There's an orange one. We went to a school that had colors like blue and white and green. I see orange. Yeah, this is orange. Yeah, I see the orange white here. Yeah, all the white starch. Really, they have blue. Oh, I said first, and then the solid colors between them. Or which side is it? The one on this the one right here. This looks like this diagram. With the 
Green, white, green. Orange, white, blue. Blue, white. That's that. Will you be required to manage this orderly? <laughs> I can't tell you. I doubt it. But I can't tell you. Remember now, it, Dr. Daly Morris is, does the examination. So that's why I'm not such, I doubt she's going to ask you list the color in order for your five, six, eight. Or uh, any standard or anything like that. All right. Um, yes. All right. So you tested your cable yet? Dana, Jessica. Oh, can you agree with that? Did you did you test your? We did, but something went wrong, so we had to do it again. Oh, yeah, to do it again. Okay. Yes. And you ensured that you use the same standard for both ends. Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, well, let me know what the results of that is. Uh, okay, but then. I hope that you would have learned something from this whole experience. In the event you decide to network two computers at home, or right? something like that. Oh, yes, we did. We did learn. <laughs> Good. All right. What I want to do is just to brief you on what they expect um, in the course. All right. Uh, one second, please. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. All right. So let me try and give you an overview of the course. Um, all right. So it is assessed by sixty percent coursework and forty percent exam, which is. Um, I believe one final exam sometime, I think late April or early May, right? I, I don't have the dates to give you just yet. Dr. Daly Marsh will give you those dates. Oh, the dates are on Theory test April 29th, 2015. Oh, yes. We've got dates for every blessed thing. All right, so the exam, I'm told, is the 29th of April. Yes. Are you sure that's right? That's what it says, April 29th. I don't think that's right. It might be the 28th of April. That's a Tuesday. Yes. It, 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 the same chances are it's the 28th of April. Um, which is a Tuesday. Right. It normally, you normally get your exam during your, your the regular time that you have your class. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Um, Dr. Morris, Dr. Daly Morris will uh, either, she will confirm or she will correct that bit of information. So you just make a note of that. All right, now, what you're what you are going to do is your for your coursework the sixty percent is apportioned accordingly. Let me tell you now. You are to set up your virtual learning environment, which is basically installing Moodle on your remote server or your your um, web host. 
right? Your so server that is going to host your VLE. So to set up that first part um, is 5%, okay? And further details as to um, it should, you should be able to just, um, it should have been installed. You should be able to just access it. It might not have anything. You should have a name for your virtual learning environment. Those are basic things that we look for and you get your 5%, right? So that's the okay. first thing. Yes, that's the first thing. All right, for the second one, um, your, your design, your learning environment design, it's, that's 10%. So you look at um, everything, your layout, your colors, um, you would have had to select your, um, I'm assuming, well, all of, all of you are CSEC, um, CSEC and CAPE information technology teachers. So whatever you create, I think, should link to that particular syllabus or any one of those um, syllabuses or syllabi. And so you would organize and see which one of the courses. As I mentioned, I'm not emailing that document yet because I'm not sure if Dr. Morris wants to tweak it. But what will happen is you would select, based on the syllabus, a uh, number of topics, and then you would choose one of those topics to populate. Um, and you're creating something, somewhat of a course, based on one of that, one of those topics. Follow? Yes. Okay. And just as how you do courses here, you have information in the form of um, maybe presentations or word documents, PDF, any form of document. Um, even, I think, videos, if you want to make those available, you have information. And you'll also have to do, create um, quizzes um, for your students. Your, and I put in quotation marks, students, because you just need some persons to log into your system, access your system, and to do these quizzes and so on. So as throughout the course, um, the period of this, Course. Right. Here, follow it? Yes, yes. Okay. You will learn how to use the different features in this system. So you'll be able to create your quiz, to upload, create resources, links to resources, um, to design, change design, and so on, and create different courses and so on. And so their design is 10%. You also have to have a manual which speaks to the system. You can get an example. You will get an example of how the manual is supposed to look. You, you're, you have to have um, images of what. It's just a, a, a regular manual for any application that you're going to have some images in there to show how to log in, how to access it, and so on and so forth. So that's your manual, and your manual actually is 5%. Then, your e-teaching experience is worth 20%. Now this is where you have the, the actual information that you put out there, and your quizzes, and all of those things. And we want to, when you create it, and you, you can get your friends and your family involved, and you ask them to, you create, you give them access to the system and they can go on and they do the quizzes. Um, you, I'm not sure if you're required to ask one of the students in this setting here to be a part of the system, but you can do that. I'm sure you'll get time to interact somehow, whether inside or outside of the classroom, um, so that they can be a part of your virtual class and they can participate and take the quizzes and so on. So you can have the results there because we look for that. We look for activity on your, um, in your virtual learning environment, right? The teacher? Okay. All right, and a part of it also is you do a presentation 
on your virtual learning experience. Okay, so the whole thing from the setting up everything, you talk about the experience. Um, so you do a presentation on that. And that is worth 15%. Or it's 20%. I think it's 20, 50% with voice. There, it should have voice threads, um, which is an additional 5%. All right, so I haven't done the math, but did I add up to 60%? Yeah. Are you there? Um, yes, we're there. Presentation. <laughs> The presentation 15% and there is a feature that you should include the voice thread which is an additional 5%. 5%. Yes. Bonus. Hmm? Bonus. Right, so, so that's your coursework in a nutshell. Now, as it relates to the setting up, we try to get that done as quickly as possible because what persons find, persons have had to set up this system several times before um, being totally successful. There tends to be some hitches and hitches, so we ask you to get going as soon as possible. Now, you've already signed up for your free host account, um, FileZilla is the application that you would use to transfer your files to the free host. Um, but you haven't installed, you haven't downloaded and installed that as yet. The third thing is that you need the package from Google with all the files that you're going to, to require to set up the system. So it comes and it, it's a pretty simple setup. Um, I don't want to tell you which one to download because I'm not sure which one um, the free host supports. So before, let me just verify something first before I, I tell you. 1.9. 1.9? Okay. All right, so the version that we're working with is Moodle version 1.9 and to access the Moodle application, go to Moodle, M-O-O-D-L-E, just like Noodle, dot O-R-G. All right, when you get to that site, you will see that um, there's a link that says Downloads. No, Moodle is, I think it's a gentleman who was doing his studies who realized that there was a need for a system like this and he created and it's open source. So um, persons, there's a community of persons who actually uh, test and um, utilize their skills and modify Moodle. So you'll find that there are different versions because as they go along, they iron out different kinks in the system, add different features and so on. So there are different versions. But why? They're, they're at, I think, 2.8.3. The one I'm asking you to download, I think, is 1.9.19, no? Yeah. That's a more recent one. Is that a more recent one? There's two point the most recent. Point six. at least 2.6, she said. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Dana and Jessica, are you there? Yes. Yes, we're listening. Okay, I, I've been corrected. And what we were told to download last week is the version 2.8. 2.8? That's what we At least 2.6. Well, 2.8 is the, the latest. So download the latest one. 2.8 plus. 2.8 plus. 3 plus. Okay. All right, so download the latest one. And I think okay. it's 2.8.3 plus. <laughs> All right, so I, I want you to just take a minute and go to the Moodle site. Moodle.org, you are able to access it. Moodle. Yes, Moodle. we're going to do that now. Okay. So, 
Yes, we are on the Moodle side. Okay. All right. Now, since you're, you're going to work from your computer at home? Yes. All right. So when you get there, then you can go to, um, in download, you can select the one that says 2.8.3. And you should get, um, I, well, I work with the zip file. I think most persons have Windows it, extracted. So you can work with that. So you can download it. That's that. That's just model. Yeah, we were able to search for it. Okay, all right. There should be one that says portable. There portable? One that says, yes, portable. One of the links should be portable. One more download, please. Um, are you in the 
Um, no, we haven't seen it. Yeah, okay. Alright. Alright, right. 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 so what must you do for your homework? You should download FileZilla. You already have your login information because you signed up for your account, so you're going to hold that information dear to you. Your login information for your free host. You yeah. download FileZilla and install it. You download the Moodle package. Oh, am I going too fast? No, you're not. Okay. So you you have to have your, you have already have your login. You need to have FileZilla and you need to have your Moodle package. All right. So once you've downloaded that. Once you've downloaded your Moodle package, you are going to log in using the login information, your username, your password, and I think the server name. That's what it requires. Those three things. And those three things can be found when you log into your free host site. Let me just... Do I have one? Valentine, do you have one? I'm trying to help you to do some of the work at home. You have to login information. No. You're seeing it now? Okay, that's good. Okay, so on the, the right hand side of the screen, you'll see account information. So the domain is really the link, it's, it's used as the URL or the link to access your site. When you get it set up, um, but when you set it up, it's going to have a slash move. But technicalities, we get to that. Your username now, um, that's what you use. You need your username, your password, and the information that says server name. Those are the three things that you need to log in via FileZilla. Goodbye. Okay? Follow? Yes, we are. Okay. All right. So when you get in, when you are going to sign in to FileZilla, before you can upload your Moodle, your Moodle folder with all of those files, then you will have to sign in with your username, password, and you have to put the server name that the files are going to go to. And in this okay. case, it's um, 
Server 27 dot free hosting to uh, All right, so I, I think that's that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go into anything else. Um, not much can be done beyond this point. You just have to get your Moodle package. You have to upload the files and you have to start the installation process. Okay, there are some documents. Okay. There are some documents on Moodle.org that you can you can access and you can utilize. All right. Are there any questions? Yes. After you do the setup for the because I download the file or whatever the Moodle when it's on my the desktop here. Um, if I were to go home and download Moodle on my home machine, um, would I be able to, whatever I'm doing here, would be able to replicate them there, or I'd have to do something separate? All right, rephrase the question. Courtney is asking a question. You said you... All right, so because we don't have the proper login or whatever, so we're yeah. using something. Right. So, um, but no, I would like to go home and do because the, the, the web hosting part of it that we can get outside anywhere. Yeah. But in terms of the moon, it's something that's physically on a machine. So I want to know if, if I go home and download the moon on my machine mm -hmm. and do something, would I have to do something separate or it doesn't matter? Several mm -hmm. uploads with us. No. Um, when you go home, you it's the same anyway. Let me make sure I understand. Uh, when you go home and you download it onto your computer, you can just log in through FileZilla and upload it from here. But make sure that it, it takes a while. It takes a while to upload because it's, a, it's a, I think, thousands of files. Little, little, little files, but they're a, a oh, so it's a one-time upload. And yes, one-time upload and that's it. Okay. And there is a particular file that you actually used to do the setup. All of that is in the same Moodle package. So you just need to upload everything to the server via files. And then you take the files. Did you hear that? Yes, me. Okay, all right. All right, so are there any other questions? Um, no, for now. I guess when we go home and we try, probably next class. Okay, so when you start, when you get your hands dirty, then, then you have some questions to ask. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, it was a pleasure meeting you. Um, I am not sure if I, I'll probably encounter you sometime later on in the program. I must welcome you to the program. We are happy that you are taking part and utilizing this modality. Um, I hope that, I know there are kinks and there are hitches and hitches, but as Courtney has expressed some, I, I, I hope that we get those bugs out sooner than later and we can have some smoother sailing from this point onwards. Okay? I hope so too. <laughs> yes. All right, so thank you for participating, and I think you should, yes, go and do your homework, and Dr. Daley Morris will meet with you next week. Have a good evening. Um, thank, thank you, and you too. Bye. Bye, class. Bye. Bye, class. <laughs> Are we supposed to you say every thing? single file and commit to so memory? Or? No, no, no. no. Oh. Remember when I was looking at somebody's file and going, Ooh, we have a problem with that. Try not to get nervous. And, um,